August 22nd, 1989. Nolan Ryan is one strike away from doing what no pitcher has done in the history of baseball. Five thousand strikeouts. That along with seven no-hitters are the hallmarks of Nolan Ryan's career. But what if that's just scratching the surface? Here's a conversation you've probably heard before. Player X is the greatest player of all time. You're nuts, Player Y is the greatest player of all time. Player X has more rings. Player Y has more MVPs. But Player Y played an era where the competition wasn't nearly as good. If you take Player Y, you put him in today's game with today's workout and nutrition standards, he mops the floor with Player X. Player X, Player Y. Hit the elder. Lord Palmerston! Hit the elder! Okay, you asked for it, Boggs! Ah! Oh, Wade Boggs, may he rest in peace. First off, Wade Boggs is very much alive. It's always the same conversation, talking about the same players who are great at everything, so everything's already been said about them. Jordan versus LeBron, Ruth versus Mays versus Bonds versus Williams, Gretzky versus, well, that one's pretty much open and shut. Now, what is way more exciting are players with specific skill sets the perfect circumstances, and a little bit of luck to put up insane numbers in one specific category. You end up with something similar to a chemistry experiment. For instance, you take a guy that bats lead off every day, he hardly ever takes a walk, he swings at everything for contact, has the speed to beat out weak hits leading to a 372 average, and boom, you have 262 hits in a season courtesy of Ichiro Suzuki. Or take another guy who also bats lead off every day. He gets on base 40% of the time for his career. He's got amazing speed and is always given the green light by his team. Plays for 25 healthy seasons and whammo, you got 1,406 stolen bases by Ricky Henderson. These are absolutely unique feats and may not make them the greatest of all time, no matter what Ricky may say. I'm the greatest of all time. Thank you but it's something that nobody else could do. And that uniqueness is what makes it special. But even these two aren't as exciting as one of my favorite unique players, Nolan Ryan. Let's go back and check out those ingredients that make a unique player. Let's take a pitcher that throws faster than anybody in the league, hitting triple digits on the radar gun, which also gives him the best swing and miss stuff around. Now add in that he has an arm made of rubber. He can basically pitch complete games at will, even on short rest. He even had one season with 41 starts and 26 complete games. In 2019, the highest were 34 starts and 3 complete games. Then give the guy an incredibly long and healthy career spanning 27 seasons, 24 of which he pitched more than 130 innings. 14 of them had over 200 innings. You probably all know by now, but these are the ingredients that make up Nolan Ryan's 5,714 strikeouts, obliterating the old record at the time by Walter Johnson at 3,509. To show how ahead of the field he is, the second highest currently is Randy Johnson at 4,875. That's only 85% of the way to Ryan's mark. And the closest active pitcher is Justin Verlander with 3,013 strikeouts, which is only 53% of the way there. But Ryan's strikeout prowess is not the full story. Let's take a look at those ingredients again. That first one, throwing faster than anybody else. Let's cross out this little section right here and change it to making him one of the wildest pitchers in the league. All of a sudden you get a different result in the end. 2,795 career walks. To put that in perspective, remember Randy Johnson made it 85% of the way to Ryan's strikeout total. For walks, the second highest is Steve Carlton, which is only two thirds of the record. For active players, the second highest is again Justin Verlander, but he isn't even a third of the way there, sitting at only 30% of Ryan's total. So Ryan all time dominates strikeouts and walks. Those two, along with hit by pitch, are the three outcomes in baseball where the batter doesn't even manage to put the ball in play. When looking back at Ryan's career, 38.4% of the batters he faced never even got the ball in play. 
How does this compare to the rest of baseball? Let's take a page from John Boyce and look at an overly large chart panning across the screen in multiple directions set to freeform jazz. Okay, enough of that. Here's every pitcher in baseball history with over 2,500 innings pitched, sorted by the percent of plate appearances where the batter doesn't even put the ball in play. At the bottom is El Spalding with only 2.5%. Spalding was one of the founders of the National League and also formed a sporting goods store and manufacturer that still bears his name to this day. Going further up on the chart, there's only 11 players with over 30%. There's a few active or recently retired players. Here's Felix Hernandez, John Lester, Cole Hamels, and the previously mentioned Justin Verlander. After Verlander's 32.4%, we get a significant jump up to Pedro Martinez at 35.6%. Then another significant jump, and we're left with only two pitchers. Randy Johnson and Nolan Ryan tied at 38.4%. The big difference between these two is Ryan kept up this high rate with over 1,300 more innings pitched than Johnson, which is about a half decade's worth of pitching. What's the takeaway from all this? Well, even a beginner baseball fan knows that, as a pitcher, strikeouts are good and walks are bad. Earth-shattering, I know. So where does that leave us when we look at Nolan Ryan's whole body of work? Is he a Hall of Famer? Is he a first ballot Hall of Famer? Is he an inner circle Hall of Famer? Or is he even possibly the greatest pitcher of all time? To answer this, it's time for us to take a look at some advanced stats. WAR stands for Wins Above Replacement. It's kind of a catch-all analytical stat that tries to capture all the good and bad things a player does and transforms that into how valuable overall that player is to his team. So let's say your favorite team's star player gets hurt and your team has to call up a guy from the minor leagues to replace him. This guy you call up isn't a major prospect, not a player that people have been waiting to see in the major leagues, and is more of a career minor leaguer that has done decent enough to get up to AAA and he's your team's best option to fill the roster. That's your hypothetical replacement player. Simply put, war is an estimation of how many more games your team would win if they started a different player over this hypothetical replacement level player. How do you calculate this number though? There's three main sources that provide war valuations. There's baseball reference, which is called B-War, fan graphs, which is called F-War, and baseball prospectus, which is called Warp. They all calculate this number slightly differently. For position players, it's a combination of their hitting, fielding, and base running, and the three different sources tend to be pretty close on these. Here's the top 10 in career war according to Baseball Reference since 1950. I chose 1950 because Baseball Prospectus doesn't include full war calculations prior to that year. If I put F-War and Warp alongside them, you can see they vary a little, but not by much. For someone like Barry Bonds, the largest difference between the three is only 1.7 war. For someone with over 160 career war, that's near negligible. Frank Robinson has the largest difference of these 10, but a difference of 13.6 wins over a 21 year career isn't that large. It's less than one win a season. Pitching war, however, has a lot more disagreement between the sources. Baseball Reference uses an adjusted runs allowed metric while Fangraphs uses fielding independent pitching, which is also known as FIP. FIP makes the assumption that balls put in play that aren't home runs are completely out of the pitcher's control whether they are a hit or not, and provides what the pitcher's value would be assuming normal luck and normal defense on these balls in play. B-War doesn't make this assumption and instead takes the actual results of the pitcher's balls in play. In essence, the difference between the two is B-War shows what happened, while F-War shows what should have happened, assuming neutral luck. Because of that, F-War tends to be more predictive of the two and shows a player's true ability, as unlucky players don't stay unlucky forever, and lucky players tend to come back to Earth. Warp, on the other hand, is a little more shrouded in mystery, and it's tough to find the full details of what goes into their calculations. But all three are using pitching stats and are trying to calculate the value of a pitcher, so they should be close, right? 
Here's the top 10 pitchers by B War since 1950. There's Nolan Ryan squarely at number 10. Throw in fan graphs and we can see some major differences. Phil Necro has a difference of 18.9 between the two, which is larger than any of the differences we saw in the position players, but that at least makes sense with him because he's a knuckleball pitcher, which kind of makes him an oddball that comes with some statistical differences from normal pitchers that cause knuckleballs to outperform their FIP consistently. Fangraphs even has an article about this admitting that their calculations for war tend to underrate knuckleball pitchers. But how does it make sense that Ryan has an even larger difference at 23.7? The difference between the two values should largely be driven by balls in play, which, as we showed earlier, Nolan Ryan has the lowest rate of balls in play of any pitcher in history. We know how much a strikeout is worth. We know how much a walk is worth. Therefore, Ryan should be the most consistent between the two types of war. Him having that large of a difference does not make sense. That does not make sense. Damn it. Damn it. What? He's using the Chewbacca defense. But let's add warp in to see if that provides some clarity. What the heck? Nolan Ryan's warp is nearly double his B war. According to B war, Nolan Ryan is the 10th best pitcher in Major League Baseball since 1950. According to F war, he's the 4th best, probably considered a first ballot and maybe inner circle Hall of Famer. According to warp, He's the greatest pitcher we've ever seen in the game, and it's not even close. The difference between his B-War and Warp at 74.9 is bigger than many Hall of Famers get in their entire careers. How is this possible? How can three sources disagree so heavily on how good of a player Nolan Ryan is? And here is where we get the title of the video. Nolan Ryan is such a unique pitcher, such an outlier in many of his stats, that the entire concept of calculating War to compare him to other players breaks down. There's simply nobody like him, so traditional means of player evaluation just don't work. So what do you think? Is he the greatest pitcher of all time, or does his extremely high walk rate bring him down a bit? Leave a message in the comments as I would love to hear opinions on the matter.